So uh, we start with the first basic geometric theorem. And uh, we'll start with a very simple but extremely useful theorem, which uh, is the perpendicular bisector theorem. So I'll just take the theorem first. And um, it's very easy to prove, so I shall leave the proof to you. But let us take the theorem very clearly, because it is going to be our first simple theorem, but extremely useful. So if you take any segment AB, and then if you draw a perpendicular bisector on the segment AB, and uh, this is a very popular construction, I think all of us know how to construct this line. Now, if you are anywhere on the perpendicular bisector, so let's say you're at a point P on the perpendicular bisector. In that case, it is very easy to prove that PA is equal to PB. In other words, these two segments are equal in length. So if P is on the perpendicular bisector, then PA is equal to so this is the uh, statement of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Interestingly, this is very easy to prove. Interestingly, the converse is true. And uh, presently, let us at least state the converse. The converse says that if you happen to have a line segment AB, and if you find a point P, if you find a point P such that PA is equal to PB, in other words, this length is equal to this length, if these two lengths are equal, that is, if PA equal to PB, then P lies on the perpendicular bisector. So with these two nice very statements, we have stated both the perpendicular bisector theorem and the congruence. Now I urge you to prove both of them. These are simple applications of congruence of triangles. And then I shall in this video, in the rest of the video, show you some really nice and wonderful application of this so-called basic lemma of Olympiad geometry. So let us now straight away shift to one of the most beautiful applications of this wonderful theorem. Please take your time out to read it if you're looking at this for the first time. So here's a very, very, very nice application of this theorem. And it's also one of the nice results that you should all be familiar with. So you take some arbitrary triangle you take some arbitrary triangle, and since this is the first time that uh, we are meeting in this forum, uh, let me tell you the standard convention. The standard convention is to use capital letters for the vertices of the triangle, and also uh, here this represents the angle A, and uh, this is angle B, and this is angle C. Now, it is standard convention to call the side opposite the angle A as small a, and this is uh, side BC is called uh, small a, and similarly this side is called B, and this side is called C. Now given an absolutely arbitrary triangle, it is possible to construct a circumcircle, circumcircle through the triangle ABC. That is a circle passing through all the points A, B, C. So this circle is called the circumcircle. Now what we should do is we shall discuss how to draw the circle. And there is only unique, there is only one such circle that you will be able to find. And we shall see that even that is pretty obvious. So how does one draw this circumcircle? And we have to use the theorem that we just learned. So for that, First, draw a perpendicular bisector on 
the one side of the triangle, in this case AB. Now do the same thing for the other side. AC. Now what you will see is that this point of intersection, which is uh, the circumcenter, we will prove that it is the circumcenter of this circle. So how should we prove that this particular point will actually be the center of the circumcircle of this triangle? So this is very easy. Note that this point uh, C dash lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB and that means that since it lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem says that this length and this length are equal. So let us just call it capital R. And these two lengths are equal. So we're going to call this as capital R. But notice another thing that C dash also lies also lies on the perpendicular bisector of AC. Now that means that from the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. The point C dash is equidistant from A and C, which means that this length is also equal to this length, which happens to be R. And finally, we see this wonderful, nice diagram, which shows that all the three lengths, C, B, C, A, and C dash C, are all equal to R. And that would mean that if I keep my compass here and take this as the radius and draw a circle, it is bound to pass through all the three points. And this then would be the circumcircle of the triangle ABC. Now, notice another interesting thing. Since both these distances are R, since both these distances are R, it also means that C dash lies on the perpendicular bisector of BC. And in a sense, uh, we have also proved something nice. And I just write it down here. We proved that perpendicular bisectors perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC are concurrent and they meet at C dash which is the center of the circumcircle. And finally, is there anything interesting else? Um, Alright, so finally, uh, we also want to say that uh, this is unique and the reason it is unique is that two lines, two lines meet only at one point. So with these simple observations of basic geometry, we prove that every arbitrary triangle has got a unique circumcircle. Now, let us do a little bit more work before we close uh, this particular first video on the basic lemma. Is it possible to get a nice formula for the circumradius? And it turns out that uh, that itself is a very beautiful theorem. And in fact, um, this is the first theorem that occurs in the magical book called Geometry Revisited. And uh, throughout our presentation, We'll be looking at several, several, several nice uh, theorems discussed in this book. And I do hope that it will motivate you to directly go to the book. It is not my intention to replace the book, but rather to help you to taste some of the great ideas that are present in the book and so that you'll actually get back to the book and uh, look at every one of those uh, theorems as well as uh, some very beautiful problems. So some of the problems, uh, I will give you the answers, but like I said, 
that you really should be doing all this by yourself. Okay, so let us see whether we can get a formula for the circumradius r. Now this leads to a very beautiful construction. So let us just draw that. We have a circle. We have a circle and uh, there is a triangle, an arbitrary triangle whose circle circle is um, given here. Now let's say that this is the center of the circle. There is a nice construction line that will help us to get the formula. So you join, let us say that you have uh, A, B and C. The construction line joins the center of the circle to one of the vertices of the triangle. And uh, let us extend it. And this is the, therefore, this is the uh, diameter or uh, let's call this CO is actually equal to 2 times the circle radius or let us call that the diameter. Now this is the first construction line. The second construction line is uh, to join O and E. Now, uh, an immediate consequence of the inscribed angle theorem. So I think uh, I need to devote another session to discuss this basic theorem called the inscribed angle theorem. A very well known theorem, but um, let us also not skip it. So we'll discuss it soon. But for the time being, because of the inscribed angle theorem, these two angles are equal. And uh, so therefore, let's call this as angle B. Also because of the inscribed angle theorem, this is an angle inscribed in a semicircle, and therefore this angle is 90. And we're almost done. All you need to see is from this right angle triangle, what is the value of sine b? Now as you can see, sine b is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite side in this case as far as sine convention is b and the hypotenuse is equal to 2r and therefore sine b is equal to b by 2r and we have a very nice formula which is b by sine b is equal to 2r and uh, I shall now proceed by symmetry and there is no reason not to expect what I am going to write. This should also be equal to a by sine a and it should also be equal to c by sine c and all of them are equal to 2r. So this gives us the formula for the circum radius. So let me just uh, write it down neatly. The same result. I'll just write it down. It goes like this. This is called the sine rule. A by sine A is equal to B by sine B is equal to C by sine C is equal to 2R. So, we have a formula for the circle radius equal to A by 2 sine A. But then, here's another very nice formula, trigonometric formula for the area of a triangle A, B, C. And like I said, now we're used to the uh, sine convention. So we have A, B, C and the height in this particular diagram, the height is equal to, if you take this angle as uh, angle B, then the height, the height is equal to C sine B. So this is uh, from this right angle triangle, the height is equal to C sine B. And therefore, the area of the triangle, now this is the standard notation for, we shall use for the area of the triangle, is equal to half base into the height, which I have written here as C sine B. 
and so you have a very nice formula for the area of the triangle, very well known formula. But again, we can rattle off two more uh, formulae by symmetry. So it's A C sine B. So we can also have A B sine C, and you can also have B C sine A. Now all that remains is to substitute uh, this into this to get another formula for the uh, circum radius. So let me see. Uh, let me just uh, instead of uh, sine A, instead of sine A, let me write A by 2R. So half B C A by 2R is equal to the area of the triangle. And here is another formula for the uh, circum radius. We have 4R is equal to ABC over the area of the triangle ABC. And this is another nice formula for the circum radius of the circle. And I hope that. Uh, you have really enjoyed this very simple result, the perpendicular bisector theorem and uh, some of the consequences and some of the very beautiful formulae that uh, come up here. So let me just uh, put it right here so that you are able to see all the important uh, formula right here in front of you. And none of them are, none of them are difficult to derive as you can see I was able to write all of them down in a few minutes. Please go through them and don't forget that I've taken this from Geometry Revisited and uh, you're all invited and immediately get hold of this book and have a look at all of these in the book plus some very nice exercises. So I shall stop now and catch up with another similar theorem in another video. Thank you.